Lebeland is the freest country on the planet, it's the third smallest one, uh, which is also the newest uh, that was started so far. And uh, we embrace the ideas of liberty. We really think that the government should be limited, that there should be very little regulation and that the taxation should be voluntary, which is probably the most, uh, let's say, innovatory concept that you can see in the world today. Because we believe that, uh, you know, that uh, people shouldn't go to jail if they don't pay taxes. They should be incentivized in other ways to pay taxes. And what we have done is that we have turned Liberland into basically a corporation. So whenever you pay taxes, you become shareholder of the country that you're living in. And that's a, let's say, a new concept, uh, but I think it's the right one to go, right one to, to, to take uh, the path to. Well, technically you need uh, four elements uh, and one of them is a piece of land. And uh, of course, like countries are starting in different ways. Uh, we've got now a strong push for uh, independent Catalonia. Uh, there is a um, Kurdistan effort going on and other uh, problematic places, but that, that's the way that people are starting countries. But you can also find an unoccupied piece of land which doesn't have the controversy. And you can claim it and you can start start a new country there. There are still a couple places left on this planet where you could do that. Well, we are embracing the technologies that are coming and they will render traditional states basically uh, obsolete. And that's a, a situation which every single state will have to deal with. So, for example, our company registry is decentralized and it doesn't really need jurisdiction and it's already running better than any other uh, company registry. And uh, uh, we're working on that with Aragon One, uh, which is a very nice company that made this available using Ethereum, which is kind of a new Bitcoin, uh, a smart contract, a smart money which can be programmed and you can make these amazing things like corporations created in virtual reality, yet they are completely transparent and better functional. And there are other things, right? The, the, the world of cryptocurrencies is rendering banks completely uh, useless and, and, and we just got an article two days ago from uh, the IMF which stated that IMF sees that the cryptocurrency will drive banks out of business. So we are here to embrace that future, we are here to support liberal lenders to use these new technologies and uh, we want to show the world uh, a way forward. Yeah, we've got a great number of different associations. Uh, for example, we are just launching a Rotary Club of Liberland, which is recognized by Rotary International. Uh, so that will be a big event. Uh, we've got, uh, for example, the ch national chess team, uh, which is playing uh, with other countries. Uh, and we already beat two other countries in chess, which was um, pretty amazing. Uh, we've got lots of things going on, of course, in social media. I believe there is like 500 pages created on Facebook with different interests for different interest groups in Liberland. So it's kind of exciting uh, to see that ecosystem growing. Yes, and it's, it's a, let's say it's a temporary way how we are settling Liberland using houseboats which are parked inside of Liberland or on the, on the borders of it, depending on the security situation. So we can host up to 20 people now that can sleep in Liberland. We've got purified water, we've got a small solar power plant. Uh, we are ready to host events of 150 people right now. Right now we've got one person from Argentina who came there and he was with us already for two months and he came back. Uh, we've got one American student that is basically finishing his studies and, and doing his, as his intern work. Uh, so they help us usually with some IT, IT business. We also had a person, a programmer uh, from UK uh, there recently and he's working on Liberland related IT systems yet he stays on the houseboat which is parked next to Liberland. We've got a great number of uh, contacts to other governments. I've, I think I've met like six, seven heads of state so far during my traveling. And uh, I was very honored to have an official state visit to Somaliland uh, 14 days ago or 12 days ago actually. I just came from there. Uh, we made an agreement. Uh, we agreed to cooperate in those areas where Liberland is strongest. 
and uh, we're looking forward for a long-standing friendship uh, between two of our nations. Okay. Serbia was always very supportive of whatever we have done. Uh, I have to tell that it was kind of exciting for us to receive the endorsement letter from the foreign ministry which stated they don't mind creation of Libelan, it's not formed on their territory only 11 days after Libelan was started. It, Croatia uh, position is a bit reserved. Uh, they state that uh, uh, Liberland is not theirs, but it's not subject to occupation by a third party. Uh, that's why it's a little bit difficult to settle Liberland at this stage. But we're we are, uh, going, we're finding our way around it. We're trying to make sure that Croatia understands that we can bring enormous economic benefit to the whole region, uh, that we could fix the unemployment problem, that there is also large emigration from the whole region and we can stop that and we can make sure that the flow of money and goods and uh, services and people uh, starts to go the other way around and that we help this part of Balkans to really flourish. Well it is the enormous ongoing support and then uh, hundreds of people still applying on daily basis to support Liberland. It's this endless source of great ideas and, and resources that has been created through the citizenship application, application where we actually ask people how they can contribute and that's one of our biggest problem. It's kind of hard to utilize the power of half a million people that want to contribute and help. So sometimes when you don't reply um, people just have to actively basically pursue whatever they have a promise to deliver and uh, that's the best way how to get liberal and citizenship and how to get uh, actively involved. Well, we've got four ministries now. Minister of Interior is, is taken by Dennis Spirits, who is a very skilled person that was working with a number of governments before. Uh, we've got Thomas Walls, our foreign minister, Zorana Koromaza, she is both Croatian and Serbian and she's our minister of justice. Uh, we've got Vice President Bogi Vozniak, he's American. So we've got a nice team of people that f formerly were from other countries, now they claim liberal and citizenship and they're working hard to get liberal and uh, up and running. Yes, yes, that's the a task of Ministry of Justice and we've got a lo long discussion going on, um, but I think we're very close to uh, settling it and actually being able to uh, show to the world uh, the Constitution version 3.0. We got now 2.0, and uh, I think we will. It will be something where our other countries could be inspired as well. Well, we, we took inspiration from American Constitution, from Swiss Constitution. We, for example, made sure that the state cannot make any debt, just like they have it in Swiss Constitution. Uh, we made sure that people can veto the actions of government and I think that's a very important thing. Uh, we call that system uh, Democracy 2.0 uh, or Double Democracy. Uh, that, that is a concept which allows uh, citizens to have full control over the actions of government. They can stop any action that they don't like. But on the other hand, we don't give citizens a power to initiate new actions, which I think is also good because sometimes democracy is not the best system uh, that can be put in place. Sometimes the majority simply comes up with bad ideas and they are able to push them through. Okay, so what's going to be the alternative? For that? We've got a system of double democracy, that means the, the, the state is basically run by its shareholders. Uh, so it's something between republic and, and monarchy in a way. Uh, and the shareholders will make active decisions. Uh, whenever you pay taxes, you get more shares. Mm -hmm. So people that support the country will be incentivized uh, and they will have more decision-making power. But on the other hand, uh, the majority of society in terms of citizens so will be able to veto the things that uh, the shareholders make decisions about. Well, shareholders cannot be elected, but shareholders will elect their representatives. So the government will be basically formed by by shareholders and uh, and again we, we will have to be approved by the citizens but it will be the government uh, the the shareholders that will make the, the active decisions well the big thing is that we have launched our representative office here in Istanbul it's uh, the 80th representative office in place it's some 20 minutes uh, from here in Levant uh, 
Uh, we are happy to occupy or be hosted by one of the co-working centers there. Uh, we are hoping to bring a lot of um, crypto business to Istanbul through our channels. So one of the pro tasks now here is to also open up a place where you can trade Bitcoin uh, freely. So those are the immediate actions right here, right now. But a part of that, uh, we are going to have an ICO, uh, which is an initial coin offering. We will actually uh, come up with a, a currency system for Liberland, uh, which will be based on similar technology like Bitcoin. And we hope to be able to crowdfund uh, enough money for us not just to occupy Liberland, and, uh, but also to get some extra territories. And we are looking now in places in Africa and also in places in Central America. And we need to be able to accommodate all those half million people that applied for citizenship. And we cannot fit them there. There is no way we can fit half million people in Liberland. Mm -hmm. So we have to start looking for new places. That's very important. Those are the basic elements which we are looking into when people are applying for citizenship. We are checking if they are, don't have a criminal background. Uh, we are also asking them if they respect religious beliefs of other people and that's very important for us that there is no religious war going on in Liberland. And if you don't respect Muslims, uh, that's a problem because then we cannot expect. Uh, but and on the other hand, if you don't, if you are trying, for example, as a Muslim to impose your values on somebody else, that's also not appreciated. So we're trying to prevent uh, getting on board people for which the, the religion is a uh, basically a, some kind of clash mechanism. And we really want to have people that respect the religious beliefs of others and of course race and so on. That's I think where uh, this uh, conference and the beliefs uh, and maybe one of the reasons why I got invited uh, are coming from uh, that there is this uh, mutual um, understanding of these core values uh, that bind uh, Liberland and this conference together.